You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZW LP Conroe and 106.1 KZCC LP Conroe and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Hi, welcome to Legal Connection Show. My name is Tony Collins. I'm an attorney um, in Texas and live in the Montgomery County area. I, this show is a public service for the residents of Conroe and Montgomery County and uh, the surrounding cities uh, and we talk about topics that uh, will help uh, the residents and uh, you can get us uh, or listen to us at FM 104.5 and FM 106.1 on the local radio bands on Tuesdays at noon until one o'clock and you can also um, listen to us if you don't uh, if you can't listen to us on that broadcast at the Legal Connection Show on Facebook, we have a Facebook page where you can get all of our um, previous uh, recordings. Um, you can also go to irlonestar.com, dot com, um, and on on that uh, that's the actual radio station that we broadcast on. You can go to the Legal Connection Show and find all of our uh, previous recordings if you want to go back and listen to them and you can also go to the legal connection show um on youtube all of our previous um recordings are also housed that way so um today we're going to talk about a couple of issues that um affect the community uh one is who's running for the montgomery county offices in 2022 and uh, and then we're going to kind of focus on uh uh the commissioner's race because uh, uh, Charlie Riley is running against um, Jennifer Eckhart and uh, 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 Commissioner Riley, who's the incumbent, uh, had posted some um, had, had, on his campaign page. He had posted some stuff that has to do with our uh, that involved our homeowners association. Um, one of the ones that I have some property in, which is the. Westwood Landowners Association over in Montgomery County in Magnolia. And we we're going to uh, have a special guest, uh, Diana, who is the treasurer of the Westwood uh, Landowners Association, to go over some issues that, that um, affect drainage and uh, some of the uh, legal aspects of who's responsible and some opinions from Governor Abbott. And then we're going to discuss some of the, the, the legal cases that involve that same issue. All right. So um, to get into our show, who is running uh, for Montgomery County offices in 2022? And that um, topic was, I keep seeing all these campaign posters everywhere, not even knowing that there's an election coming up, because typically that's in November. And I know there's primaries and what have you, but it made me look because I know a lot of these people personally that are running. I didn't know they were running for office. And my uh, my husband told me, my beloved uh, uh, husband's like, you need to run for office. And uh, this is not a good time for me to be running for anything uh, because I'm getting ready to start my um, graduate program to get my master's in the architectural department at Texas A&M um, in land development so I can start just one more career in my life, uh, in addition to being an attorney and real estate broker, I'm now going to learn how to be a developer. So I'm pretty excited about that, and that starts next week. But that's going to take a little bit off my plate. And I think once I finish that master's program, I'll be in a better position to run for, for office because I'll know all the ins and outs and the permits uh, re- required and you know, legally, what um, what kind of liability and responsibility the different developers and homeowners and uh, and what have you, everybody has. Um, so that's just going to help me along, and I'll be better prepared to help the community. All right, so who's running for Montgomery County offices in 2022? And I'm reading this from the Impact newspaper, and that looks like it's um, produced in Montgomery County. So uh, this goes on to say the deadline to file for candidacy in Texas elections ended December 13th, probably around the same the time that you saw all these these um, election and campaign posters going up around the various areas. Um, In Montgomery County, 22 candidates filed for county offices um, in the March 1st primary. So the primaries are March 1st. That's why you're seeing suddenly all of these billboards and campaign notices. Um, uh, And this is according to the Secretary of State. Um, Of note, three candidates, including incumbent Mark 
T.O. filed for county judge, two candidates each, including incumbents Charlie Riley and James Metz, filed for commissioner seats for precincts two and four. The first day to apply for a ballot by mail will be January 1st, and the last day to apply will be February 1st. Um, voting will run from February 14th to the 25th, according to the Secretary of State's office, and Texans can find more information on registering the vote through www.votetexas.gov. And there's always uh, just a plethora of information when you go to uh, these, uh, d- these uh, state websites, votetexas.gov, and they've also got the state library. Um, if you are not just listening and you actually sit down and Google something other than what's on Facebook and, you know, uh, the latest on what what the cause of death was for, you know, uh, Bob Saget or, you know, uh, Betty White or things that are or who won the in the national championships for NCAA uh, football, which, by the way, was Georgia, if you watched that game last night. And it was very exciting. And I was so excited to see Georgia just come through and finally get their, you know, national championship, you know, 40 years late when they've come so close and they worked so hard. And it was all like in the last three minutes. Really exciting game. And so congrats to the Georgia Bulldogs. I'm very excited for them. My, my sister was born in Savannah, Georgia. So I've got that kind of close to my heart. Um, all right. So here are the, um, the people that are running for the different offices that um, I just had no idea until I looked at this. Mark Keogh is uh, running for the Republican uh, primaries uh, to be in the Republican primaries. He filed November 24th. Sarah Countryman is also running on the Republican side. She filed December 3rd. Billy Graff is also running uh, as a Republican. He filed November 25th. Um, And and it's interesting to note that nobody is running um, on the Democratic side in Montgomery County for county judge. Makes sense. We're a very Republican county. All right. Uh, Second, Precinct 2 Commissioner. Charlie Riley is the incumbent. He filed on November 17th. Uh, Jennifer Eckhart Eckhart is uh, filed December 3rd. She's also uh, filing as a uh, running as a Republican in the primary on uh, March 1st. I'm hoping to have um, Commissioner Riley and uh, his opponent, Jennifer Eckhart, on the show both uh, uh, individually to sort of tell me what their, for the benefit of the community, what their campaign platforms are. Um, in Commissioner Riley's case, what he's done the, for the community, how long he's been in office. And in um, his opponent, Jennifer Eckhart's case, what she will do differently and why we should vote for her. Um, and we're going to go over a little bit a uh, little bit more about what he's post, uh, Commissioner Riley's posted on his campaign website that affected our homeowners association in a little while today on the show um but to go on a uh, precinct four uh commissioner uh the candidates for the primary are james metz running as a republican he filed november 17th and matthew gray who filed november 25th so there's only two people running in that race for precinct one justice of the peace wayne mack is the incumbent he filed november 25th and nobody's running against him, so um, I don't see anybody as the running as the Democratic on the Democratic side either. So Wayne Mack is going to be in again, and I've been in this court a number of times um, for eviction cases and very small claims cases, and um, I really like him. I think he's a fair judge. Um, uh, the way he runs his court, and you know, he says the prayer and. Uh, you know, a prayer and a, a, an allegiance to the Texas flag and the American flag. I'm, he runs a pretty tight ship, so he's a, a good guy. Uh, I like his court. So for Precinct 2, Justice of the Peace, we have Grady Spikes. He's a Republican. Nobody else is running against him. He's more than likely going to win that primary. And it appears that he's, without anybody running on the Democratic side, he's going to be the next Justice of the Peace for Precinct 2 by default. Uh, Precinct 3, Justice of the Peace, and that's the one that's over there um, uh, on Lakefront um, uh, and the Woodlands Mall, there is the incumbent who is Matthew Beasley, Republican. Um, he's filed December third, and the Democratic uh, uh, a Democrat has filed a, uh, April Prim has filed as a Democrat for the primary. So they're both going to win their primaries, but they will they will face off in the November election for to find out who is going to be the Justice of the Peace. Um, I will say that um, uh, Judge Matthew Beasley, who's the incumbent, will 
more than likely win because we're such a heavily Republican uh, uh, county. But, you know, let's just, I guess it remains to be seen when we have the actual elections. Um, Precinct 4, just the piece, uh, Republican Jason Dunn is the only one who's filed on November 25th. So by default, he's probably going to be our Justice of the Peace for Precinct 4. And Justice of the Peace, uh, Precinct 5, is Matt Masden. He filed November 17th, and nobody else has filed as a Democrat uh, under the Democratic primary or against him, so he will probably by default also be the Precinct 5 Justice of the Peace again. Um, County Court at Law 1 has got two persons running, both un- and as Republican in the Republican primary. They both filed November 17th. Uh, Brian Kane is the first one, and the second is John Halfley. Um, I've, I'm familiar with John Halfley, not so much Brian Kane, but I probably know him by sight if I saw him. Hopefully I can get one or, or both of them on our show to talk about why um, either one of them is the better candidate, the, the county court at law number one judge. County Court at Law Number Two has got, um, uh, gosh, I don't have anybody for County Court at Law Number Two, but that just means that my page ran out, and so I don't know who's running for that court, or even if they're up for election. It just is listed, so I'll have to give you an update on that when I find out more information. Um, County Court at Law Number Three has got uh, two persons running. Um, Amy Tucker is running as the incumbent. As a Republican, she filed November 17th. Uh, My understanding was that she was the associate judge before she was appointed by uh, 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 Governor Abbott to take that uh, the role as the head judge because the uh, I think the judge that uh, that the head of that court had to resign for medical reasons. Um, But I don't remember right off. I just know that she was the associate judge and now she's running as the incumbent because she was appointed. Um, Laura Watson is her opponent in the March primaries as a Republican. I don't know anything about Watson, uh, Laura Watson, except uh, we also have a Judge Watson in County Court Law Number 5, so they might be related, but I don't know. I'll have to look into that and keep you updated on our next show. Um, I'd love to have both of them on to talk about why one or both, either one of them is the better candidate for being running for office to be our County Court at Law Number Three Judge, and I do a lot of work in County Court at Law Number Three, so that's an important court for me because they do um, probate and divorces. So um, critical that we get a good person as judge in that um, position. Uh, I know that I have some friends that live near um, Judge Tucker, and they uh, just love her. They think she's the best person uh, ever. So um, I'd love to have her on and talk to her in person, and she can you can decide for yourself. Um, County Court at Law Number 4 has got one person that filed for the uh, Republican primary. That's Echo Hudson. Um, Without having a Democratic, um, uh, anybody in the Democratic primary and anybody else or even incumbent, it looks like Echo Hudson just by default is going (laughs) to win. There's no incumbent there. So, uh, you know, there you go. You got to kind of keep watch of uh, if you want to run as a county judge and you fit the uh, and you meet the criteria for it, I guess you got to kind of keep up and be politically connected enough to know what positions are open. Um, county Court Law Number 6, which I think that must be a new court because I've never been in County Court Law Number 6. Charlene Valdez, um, Republican, filed November 18th, has no body running against her. So by default, she's going to be our County Court at Law Number 6 judge. And she wasn't an incumbent. Um, hopefully she can come in and tell us a little bit about herself so we will be informed um, here in Montgomery County. Uh, District Clerk, uh, the only person that's running that has filed for the primaries is Melissa Miller. She's the incumbent, done a really, really good job. She filed November 25th. She will, be by default, be our District Clerk again. And um, County Treasurer, the only person that's filed for the primaries is Melanie Bush, uh, the incumbent, filed November 25th also. And... Um, by default, it looks like she's also going to be our county treasurer again. So those are all of the Montgomery County candidates that filed to our primary. So that's not that's not all the candidates in the state. There's many other people that we will vote for um, that are running for, you know, governor and a land commissioner, what have you. But today I'm only discussing the ones that affect us here in Montgomery County. All right. So um, I want to talk a little bit about... Um, Commissioner Riley's uh, post that he made on his campaign uh, site 
and uh, what he has to say about um, Westwood and uh, Landowners Association and uh, his position on drainage and the responsibility of the commissioner and, and what have you. Um, but I'd like to take a short break so we can get um, our uh, treasurer of the Westwood Landowners Association on the line. So we're going to take a short break and get her on the line, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this and Charlie Riley's post, as well as his visit on drainage, and then what we know about the legal position on who's responsible for drainage um, issues within our community. So I'll talk to you in a little bit. Listen in Mondays at noon to hear Conroe news from local nonprofits, businesses, upcoming events, Conroe Park events, news stories, and information that matters to you with your host, Margie Taylor of Taylorized PR. For more information about being a guest, visit IRLoneStar.com slash Conroe Culture. God's Garage is a 501c3 that repairs and gives away cars for free to single moms, widows, and wives of deployed military. You can help God's Garage by donating a vehicle, volunteering your time, or by monetary donation. God's Garage is located at 2106 East Davis, Conroe. If you'd like to learn more about God's Garage, visit our website at godsgarage.org. Or you can contact us, and we would be glad to come and make a presentation to your group. Hi, welcome back to the Legal Connection Show. Um, We're talking about, uh, we just got through talking about the campaign elections and who's running for the different uh, primaries in what offices in Montgomery County a few minutes ago. And um, we're now going to talk about um, Commissioner Charlie Riley, who's an incumbent running for, uh, he's in the primary on March 1st. Um, Some information that he posted on his, I believe it was his website and maybe his campaign website that that was, uh, I guess, we learned about through our homeowner association. And so I've got Diana Machete, who is the treasurer of uh, the Westwood Landowner Association to tell us a little bit about what was posted and what was found. And, and the, the topic that came up today about uh, d- drainage problems in our community, but it also affects a number of other neighborhoods and communities in Montgomery County. And we're going to just explore that a little bit. Okay, so welcome to the program, Diana, and uh, tell us a little bit about what happened. Thank you. Um, it was brought to our attention um, when it was posted on our neighborhood pages that um, Commissioner Riley had um, posted on his campaign page and on his official um, social media network for um, Commissioner that it was the um, HOA's responsibility to take care of the drainage and we know that through several of our attorney's opinions that that is not the case. And so we got, also mentioned did that we actually get a legal opinion from our attorney or was it, was it verbal or was it in writing? Do you remember? No, it's been in, it's been in writing and it's been from um, not just one attorney, but it's been from several attorneys. Uh, the attorneys for our association. And, for our association, And basically yes. that opinion says that um, there is no, uh, that the HOA, or in our case it was the Landowner Association, not just the Homeowner Association, they're kind of the same, but they have, you know, they're, they're structured a little bit differently, but that um, we're only responsible for the common areas and that the uh, LOA is free of any responsibility um, for um, the areas that are owned by private citizens, or is is that correct, or or, or what? Yes, and then because our um, plat specifically gives the um, drainage easements uh, to um, the county, the, and the commissioner's court did their formalities and signed off on it. Okay, so when we um, when our developer in like 1979 for the Westwood Landowner Association. Uh, created this subdivision, which has got about 2,100 people in it, and other neighborhoods have smaller, larger. But basically, when a developer uh, creates um, a subdivision, they uh, generally will uh, create also a homeowners association, landowners association, whatever they, they actually call it, whatever the, it's an association of members so that the community can be maintained. They also, uh, to get it subdivided, they have to 
create a plat that needs to be approved by the commissioner's court and sometimes the city. And in that plat, a lot of times the what's actually designated on that plat will take precedent and our president and then will determine what responsibilities and liabilities the homeowners association has. So you go not only to the documents, the governing documents that are created, but you look to the plat to determine whether the easements are owned, uh, have been dedicated to the county, um, are, are still by the, owned by the owner, or if they were actually given to the county. And so uh, th- every situation may be different. But in the situation with Westwood, what you're saying is that the easements are still owned by the homeowners, but they uh, that the county has responsibility for those drainage easements to maintain them for Westwood. Is that correct? Yes, and at the same time, it's when the were turned over to the county. Okay, and so it's, the, it's in the same document. Okay, and so I'm going to read what was posted so that it's it's clear, so we're not just saying what we think it says. I'm going to read what was posted on December 21st, 2021, um, on Commissioner Charlie Riley's uh, page, the one that I was provided. So if it's the same, it's the same one that was uh, that you're saying that was on the campaign page and on his Facebook page, and it reads as follows. Um, the residents of Westwood off of Sugarbush, and when he's referring to Westwood, he means Westwood Landowners Association, are commenting again again about drainage issues. And we know there, uh, as my, my understanding is that um, the Westwood Landowners Association had uh, has got low areas, and at one time had been there was going to be something called Lake Magnolia, and on parts of it, so we were a low lying area that. Um, Bear Branch ran through, so we already had uh, issues with um, with the flood zones and what have you. And I haven't looked at the, the plats, and I'm not going to be really specific about it. But there were some drainage issues out there. Okay, so back on to what he says. He says these are the same concerns which Commissioner Riley addressed with the drainage committee that included homeowners Julie Vanderhurst from Westwood and Jennifer Eckhart from Sandora Ranch in 2018. So let me stop there and ask you. Did Westwood um, Land and Association, was there, well, let me ask you this. Were you a, a board member in 2018 for the Westwood Land Owners Association? Um, honestly, I can't remember, but I believe I was. Okay. Was, was, but then it was right after that. Okay. Do you know if there was a drainage committee, at least for Westwood at yes, that time? There was, there was a drainage committee, okay. and then there, there was an, um, an, uh, an engineering report done, and he posted the survey of that engineering report and said that the county had done everything. Okay, um, but let me go back. When you say he posted it, did he post it December 21st, 2021, or did he post it in t- – and when you say he, are you talking about Commissioner Riley? Commissioner Riley posted that um, on – his page okay on, on december 21st 2021 so very recently yeah. so he posted yeah. uh it looked like a plat of something that was created in 2018 is that correct that's correct okay and so to go on with what this says this says in 2018 the 2018 recommendation which must be based on what you're telling me is the engineer's report which was reinforced by a registered state of texas engineer surveyor who is familiar with fm 1488 area and of course westwood 1488 runs kind of right through the middle of it, stated that in order to fix the drainage concerns, the HOA would need to correct the drainage easements that run alongside and behind the private property. And then he goes on to say the county cannot spend taxpayer dollars on private property. So tell me if you agree or disagree or what your take is on that last paragraph I just read. Um. The, as far as um, that, the, the county cannot spend money on private property. Um, Greg Abbott um, issued an opinion back in 2007 uh, about that the um, public funds can be spent on private property if Number one, there's an easement mm-hmm. or permission on the property. And um, number two, if it was in the um, public's best interest for it to be done. Okay. And so um, you had sent me a copy of Governor Abbott's 
opinion. And just for so our if our listeners wanted to actually read it, um, I can post it on the Legal Connection Show page. But also, I just wanted to kind of give a heads up of where it is. It's opinion number uh, GA, which is probably Governor Abbott dash o five two eight, and it was. Um, the topic of that opinion was about whether a seawall funded from assessments levied pursuant to a local government code um, may be built on privately owned land. But the the actual uh, application and analogy is the same because if you have um, privately owned land that needs uh, work done on it, um, can the government fund it? And so you're saying that based on this opinion that was um, issued by Governor Abbott, that yes, if it's in the public's best interest, that what Commissioner Riley is saying is not true, that actually the county and the state or the government can spend taxpayer dollars on private property if it meets the criteria set out in Governor Abbott's opinion, um, GA 0528. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. All right. So to go on, that, that just, it looks like there may be um, maybe a miscommunication by Commissioner Riley in his uh, posting if if Governor Abbott's opinion um, contradicts what he said. So um, the next sentence, he says, the survey drawing that he attached to his December 21st, 2021 um, uh, post, which anybody can look up, it's on Commissioner Riley, uh, Riley's pages, um, the, the survey drawing that he attached was a Westwood drawing. And it says it was given to the drainage committee in 2018. I don't know that to be True or not true, but if you were on the committee at the time and you recognize it, that may be the case. Um, it says the um, HOA, when we're actually in LOA, still has not made any attempt to correct this drainage concern on private property. So that being said, what, as the treasurer of the Westwood Land Owners Association, uh, what do you say about that statement? Is that correct or not correct? The It doesn't matter what amount of work that would have was or was not done. If if you look in the upper um, right hand um, quadrant of that survey, mm-hmm. that that is actually going through Sendera, oh, okay. and that that is a culvert that runs underneath Ranch Lake, mm-hmm. and it is about it is um, several feet higher mm-hmm. than the water level would be. So. Oh. So and and that has not been um, that has not been addressed by the county. Mm-hmm. The county would have to um, fix the culvert so that it would allow the water to run through there. Okay. Right now, it basically is is damming up the water and could not the water could could not leave no matter um, what, what we did of with work the, was done. Whatever. So what you're saying, and I'm familiar with what you're talking about because. It, it's the northern boundary of Westwood Landowners Association that borders Sendera Ranch, correct? Yes. And yes. it 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 looked it opened at one of the um, places where it appears that it would drain from our subdivision would be at twenty nine seventy eight and Ranch Lake. Is that correct? Um, it actually is in um, it's in Sendera. It's not at twenty nine seventy eight. Okay. Okay. It, it goes through it goes through Sendera. Okay. And it's um, ranch. It, it's Ranch Lake. Um, ranch Lake is a street that is in Sendera street, Ranch, yes. right? And yes. um, and it but it's the nor it's a a uh, it's basically sort of the dividing line between the two subdivisions, and it's a major drainage thoroughfare. That that is behind our subdivision, but not actually. Well, I mean, you might be able to clarify for, that for me. Is this um, is the uh, the culvert on Ranch Lake? Is that owned by on private? Pro- is it on private property or on on county property? Do you know? It's the the roadway is county property. Okay, is it the an culvert easement? Is county property. Is the culvert on? Is it in an easement or is it actually owned by the county? Do you know? It um, is not on the easement. It actually runs underneath a county road. Okay, got it. And so, um, so what he's saying, basically, if if I'm understanding this, and I haven't looked at all the facts, he's saying that um, that this is private property, but according to the plat, it's not private property. Is that correct? 
Ranch Lake is not private property. Where that culvert stands. Property. Okay. Where that culvert stands is okay. not private property. Is county property. And again, we're not but trying. County to... maintained. County maintained. Um, roadway. Okay. Either way, the county would maintain it because it's an easement that was dedicated for use of. Uh, I, and I haven't looked at this, but you're saying that it says in the actual plat that was signed off by the commissioner's court that that particular culvert is maintained by the county. Is that correct? That That's correct. And that actually, that um, it, where it runs um, in that upper right-hand quadrant mm-hmm. where, it, where it's a, um, a thin line running up there, uh-huh. that's the easement that goes through Sendera Ranch. Okay. to that culvert. Okay, so I'm I'm actually going to try to show our listeners this little plat. I'm not sure if it'll it'll show or not, but this is the plat that's attached to the bottom of Commissioner Riley's email and I, I don't know if you can make it large or not if you just want to go there, but you can see on this plat that there's a a tiny little line that runs between the two subdivisions. This is Sincera Ranch, Sincera Ranch to the north and Westwood Landowners Association to the south. And it does appear that there is a, that this particular a culvert is not um, uh, owned by the homeowners members, but is an actual easement that was dedicated to the county, much like a street would be. I don't know that without actually looking at the, the deed records and what have you, but, but I'm kind of relying on what you're telling me right here. One way or the other, whether it's on private property with an easement or if it was uh, dedicated and given to the county, what you're telling me is that it's a... A, a culvert uh, thoroughfare that should be managed by the county for drainage purposes, correct? Yes, it runs because it runs underneath their roadway. Okay. And um, so I'm going to go on to to talk a little bit about more more what um, what is you know actually written on this uh, this posting by Commissioner Riley. It says, Precinct two has corrected extended drainage paths to facilitate the flow of water in several areas. The office will provide this service where needed and within the county guidelines. Every county drainage job is measured and evaluated to keep the water off of the road and flowing through the ditches. Property owners need to notify the office at 281-259-6492 to create a work order for any problem areas. Now, that leads to me to ask you two questions. First, um, do you know to go back to another thing that was said in this posting, did did uh, Westwood Land Owners Association, whether or not it was a responsibility uh, or not, did they contact the owners that that back th- their properties are contiguous with this culvert that's being discussed, that's um, uh, that runs along Ranch Lake? Did did was was any discussion had with the owners to clear their the, the drainage on the back of their lots, or what do you know about that? The um, most of the owners were involved um, in the drainage committee or with talks with the drainage committee to try to get some relief. Okay. So, um, but the the part that runs through Sandera, those were um, that's owned by um, the. There's an easement there, but the property is owned by Sendera okay. homeowners. Okay, so that would be sort of out of the hands of the Westwood Landowners Association if the easement is actually, and the, 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 uh, if the property is owned by Sendera Ranch owners or their association or the county, the, but the, the easement is not on Westwood land. Is that what you're saying? The, the, the easement that's running... Um, Towards Ranch Lake, uh-huh. that is um, that is Sendera. Okay, um, homeowners. There is an easement that runs behind um, Westwood, and the um, the drainage, the water flows, mm-hmm. but the outflow goes through Sendera. Okay, so, so all the water that's where all the water goes from the ditches and everything. Okay. The ditches that um, are meant to flow goes through the easements of the private property owners. Okay. And so in order to, um, I guess, fact check this posting, really, um, and it seems to be geared toward Westwood because they talk about at the bottom, you know, Westwood Services, really, Sendera Ranch needs to be involved in this and discussed, not 
Westwood, if I'm reading this correctly. And even so, if it's an easement that the county's responsible for, this would be uh, probably incorrect. Is that right? That, that is, yes, it okay. is incorrect. Okay. It can, just since the water cannot flow, we have no outflow because it is, it's stuck at Ranch Lake. Okay. And it's, it's stuck at that culvert. Okay. And it's the culvert on county property, Sendera Ranch property or easement, or Westwood Landowners Association, Westwood easement. Without looking, I'm, I'm relying upon you because I don't have that map in front of me. The, the, the culvert runs under um, Ranch Lake, which is the, a road maintained by the county. Okay. So, um, all right. So, there, it looks like I will have to have, uh, hopefully, we'll get Commissioner Riley in here to be on the show to talk about this, or maybe he can respond um, to, um, or maybe correct this post if that's the case. Either respond to clarify or correct. All right. So the next thing this says, the next paragraph says, Commissioner Riley's office is very aware of repeat concerns in some neighborhoods. Recommendations are provided to the property owners to address any issues that end up being a private property responsibility. But as we discussed, this doesn't appear to be a private property responsibility because um, if the uh, if, if the easement was dedicated or if the property was dedicated um, to the county, it's a county easement. It would not be. It would take it out of the private property issue and put it into public. Or if we have to uh, looking at it from a different perspective, if it's private property with an easement running on it, then we would go to Governor Abbott's opinion. And if it was in the best interest to protect the public, then it would still be a government funded. Uh, responsibility to come clean out the culvert so the water could flow. Does that sound like, um, does that, uh, uh, I guess, comport with your understanding of what's going on here? That's correct. Okay. Um, the next thing that he has posted is, it is up to the property owners slash HOA to complete the work on their end before positive results can be sent, seen after the county has performed its responsibility to the taxpayer. So let me stop there. Do you know if Commissioner Riley has done any work on that particular um, easement that runs along Ranch Lake that he's discussing? He, he, he has not because that culvert is still um, many feet higher than the, the water level. The wa it, it basically is damming up um, and the um, so more water that's pushed that way it basically is going to have to spread out before it, it goes up and is able to get through. So uh, it needs a bigger swale, culvert. but it needs to be lower so the water can flow. Let me ask you this. Yes. The, the Westwood landowners um, and that, that border this particular culvert, and there's a number of them that because it's a really long stretch of land. Um, have we, you said that they may or may not have been on the drainage committee. I didn't catch which way, but... Um, if they were to go in and to clean out their the easement to the extent that it was possible, would that make a difference to uh, for the water flow on this um, this ranch lake culvert that you're discussing? No, because the water would still have to rise up and through the culvert, and water doesn't jump up and to get. So the, the water could not flow to the culvert, even if all of the ditches were cleaned out by the homeowners and they got a backhoe in their backyard. Is that what you're saying? That, yes, that is correct. Okay. And so basically the homeowners have done, even if they were to do everything within their power to, uh, to you know, I guess, quote, perform their responsibility, um, it would still be up to the county to come in and, 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 do some work so that the drainage would flow properly. Is that correct? That's correct. The, the culvert has to be lowered or they have to figure some kind of way to get the water to move up and through the culvert. Okay. Let me, it is so much higher. Okay. Now, um, uh, Commissioner Riley references a, a um, engineer and survey plan. He says 2018 recommendation. Um, stated that in order to fix the drainage concerns, the HOA would need to correct the drainage easements. Do we have a copy of that um, uh, that recommendation 
because I've never seen it, and it that's completely contrary to what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, yes, but it also said that that culvert had to be lowered. Okay, so or something had to be done with that um, culvert in order for the outflow um, for it to actually in order for the water to make it to the other side of the culvert. Okay. It, it would have to be lowered. Okay, and so I'm going to ask you, and I know it's a lot of work. You've got so many things on your plate right now, and you're just you know a volunteer. Um, uh, board member for the Westwood Landowner Association, but I'd like to post that report, that engineering survey that says that, or at the very least get my hands on it so I can go over it in detail with Commissioner Riley, either through a written correspondence or him on the show. Can we get our hands on that so I can talk about it on the next show? Yes. <clears throat> okay, good. So on our next show, um, we'll be able to, at a minimum, discuss this survey and determine whether or not um, what uh, Commissioner Raleigh is saying is true, or maybe he can clarify his statements on this posting. Okay, so it goes on to say at the end of this posting um, a lot about Westwood subdivision, which is kind of uh, confusing uh, because it sounds like the problem um, is one that is a county issue as well as Sendera Ranch. And this goes on to say that Jennifer Eckhart is uh, was a part of the drainage committee, uh, committee on Sendera Ranch, and she also happens to be running against Commissioner Riley for the commissioner's position. So I'm sure she's going to have something to say about it. Hopefully we can get her on the show. But this is what it says about, um, it goes on to say at the very end of this post. It says, service request by department since 2017. Six, 655 total service requests. Then it goes to say the drainage department had 421 service requests, culvert sets, erosion, ditching, and cross pipes. Um, road and bridge, 62 service requests. So this is over a five-year period, so that would be about, um, divided by five, looks like about maybe 12 a year. Um, Right-of-way, 45 service requests, mowing, trimming, tree removal. Sign department, 32 requests. Dead animal, that's kind of weird that he kind of throws that in there. 95 service requests. And then it goes on to say, the number of requests do not include regular maintenance, only residents' calls. Um, so, what? looking at this total, what can you tell me about, what do you know, living in, uh, having your residence in Westwood Landowner Association, does this, does this sort of accurately reflect what you know, or I don't know anything about this? Tell me what your position is. So, so each service request, if a new house is put in, um, then they have to have a culvert, and that's considered a service request. Okay, and we've had at um, least 400, had, yeah. Yeah, we've had quite a few, um, you know, new houses put in. If they have a second driveway put in, um, that's also a service request. Um, if somebody needs their um, ditch dug, and while the ditches are the responsibility of the county, the um, county will not dig out the ditches to, to maintain water flow. So if one resident calls and has their dig, um, ditch dug, requests for their ditch to be dug, if their neighbor does not call also, mm -hmm. um, that ditch doesn't get dug. That means the so, neighbor that had their ditch dug is now got to get to take a, a lot of water in because it has nowhere to go. Take, it's going to take a lot of, yeah, it's going to take water in. Okay. Uh -huh. So, um, and then we've also had complaints of where the um, the homeowner has called and requested their ditch to be dug and were fixed because they've had standing water in it for six months at a time, causing uh -huh. mosquito issues and, um, you know, all sorts of, because we, we are on um, aerobic septic systems uh -huh. or, um, in that, you know, if if there if if the if it floods, um, you know, it's, that's a, it's all a public hazard. Yes, yeah, it's, it's hazard. It's a public hazard. Right. Yes. Let me ask you this. Um, the uh, oh gosh, I lost my train of thought. What you were telling me about that? Would the county uh, have we asked uh, as a homeowner association? Has Westwood Landowner Association asked the county to come in and dig the ditches uniformly so that it's back to the. Uh, the the level that it was at the time that the uh, that the subdivision was created, because it seemed that if if the homeowners association, although it's not the responsibility, went in and said, "Can you please come in and put the ditches that are on the county 
easements of the county responsibility back to the level that they were, you know, to get the silt down and, uh, you know, to get everything level. Have we asked the county to come in and do that? And what was the result if we did? Yes. Yes. And um, the, um, the commissioner, Commissioner Riley, has stated that they will not come out and dig ditches un- unless the homeowner um, calls and requests it because um, some of the people get upset about their ditches being dug too deep or ditches even being dug where the grass is taken out. And um, because they, you know, it's a voting situation, basically, mm-hmm. they he doesn't want anybody mad at them. Okay, so, so let, me, let me ask you this, though. If that's the case where it's an individual request, as a landowner's association, would there be a way to get a petition signed if you went door to door to each person to have them basically request um, as a group an order for the, the benefit of the community? Um, is that something that's even possible to get everyone within a, a particular, um, uh, I guess, drainage easement right of way to sign off on it to uh, present that to the commissioner so they'll come do a uniform uh, ditch dig? Um, we have we have not um, we have not tried that uh, you know with the drainage not being in the purview of the or in the wheelhouse is what um, a few of the attorneys have said in the in the LOA's wheelhouse. Mm-hmm. I mean we'd have to do that on a um, a volunteer right. basis and okay. just go to them and ask them you know hey can you sign um, for this and w- which we would be glad to do if it. You know, if it would be, if it um, would work. But you're done. saying that right now, yeah. even if everybody agreed to have their ditches dug on this one particular drainage easement thoroughfare, that it it still wouldn't resolve the problems because of the the way that the height of the current cold there is apparently above where the the ditches are. So there wouldn't it wouldn't do any good. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. All right. Well, for, um, for section for sections um, for section four. Specifically, okay. um, is that where she, is this the the plat that's attached to um, his uh, uh, a post? Is that for section four? Because we have a number of sections in Westwood. Yes, that is that is for section. Four. Okay, so it may be different for the different sections, but with regard to section four, it appears that some of the things that he's asserted may not be um, accurate, and we'd like to have him um, address those issues uh, by making a comment in writing to us, or I say us as in the Westwood Landowner Association, or, or maybe the, the full community, anybody listening out there, um, or maybe have him come on the show and discuss that or come to a Landowners Association meeting. Does that sound like something that may need to happen to clarify what was posted? Yes. Okay, and now um, just to kind of wrap things up with with this segment, um, is there anything that you want to add that we haven't covered? Um, I don't have the particular um, court case in front of me, but there was a um, at least one where it's been cited um, several times in in other court and case opinions that the um, easement owner um meaning that since it was given to the public Mm -hmm. entity the county it would be responsible for the maintenance of the easement okay um i can forward you that well i would like you to forward it to me so i can post it on our website and then when we um if we have the opportunity to talk to uh commissioner riley or get some response from him or feedback as well as his opponent, Jennifer Eckert, who apparently was on the drainage committee and may have some understanding of what was going on with this particular culvert that was that's being discussed, um, that would be a good thing to have in hand to be able to discuss with both of them. So if you'll forward that and we'll post it on our site, we can talk about that hopefully next week or when we get a we, response. We, we also we also have, um, there was a, a meeting that... Um, Commissioner Riley and the county attorney came to at the Westwood Landowners Association. Um, when was that? The building. Mm-hmm. Um, that was probably back in 2018. Okay. Where um, the, and, and Commissioner Riley stated 
yes, he has the right to maintain the property, but nothing makes him take the responsibility to maintain the property. And you're saying to maintain that, the easement. And you're saying that's contrary to the case that you're going to provide me, as well as Governor Abbott's opinion and your understanding of the governing documents for Westwood. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So we're going to go over those three, um, uh, I guess, factoids, I guess. They're not even really factoids. They're actually legal um, uh, of documents that support that perhaps what he has uh, posted uh, may be um, interpreted differently or there may be some confusion about it and let him, uh, Commissioner Riley, clarify that for us or, and or let um, his opponent, Jennifer um, Eckert, give us some feedback on that and her position since um, I would love to get this drainage issue resolved. So um, I'm going to um, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, talk about some uh, drainage related responsibilities just in uh, the, the, the city um, ordinances, as well as uh, some stuff that's been posted by Texas A&M on water law and change responsibility. So I'm going to go over that um, in our next segment. But thank you for uh, contributing what you have so far. And hopefully we can get oh. you on again. Thank you for um, thank you for having me. And it was every all of this affects you know other commu- other neighborhoods. Also. Right, right, right. You so know that is very. This is analogous to all other communities in Montgomery County, and, and perhaps even the state. But right now, specifically to Montgomery County, because this is what our show is covering, and uh, we were just really focusing on uh, Commissioner Riley, who is the commissioner of in Montgomery County for Precinct 2, we're just kind of focusing on some things that he said and how that how the law kind of segues into that. And so what we're going to post on our website is we're going to um, post uh, our legal opinion from our attorneys that we can dig that up where it was. We're going to post the the case law that you found that says that um, that the if there is a government dedicated or owned easement that they have to maintain it. Uh, we're going to look at, we're going to post Governor Abbott, Abbott's opinion GA0528 that talks about if it's a public um, or asserts that if there is a public need that the government will fund um, the cost for uh, preparing these easements and um, we will hopefully um, also be able to uh, uh, get both Commissioner Riley and his opponent in to give us some of their information on this issue and so we can clarify it for everybody in other communities as well. I appreciate it. All right. So thank thanks you. for coming on. We'll talk to you later. And so we're going right. to take a short break and then we're going to talk about some of the drainage laws and and uh, with uh, that's given us some information from the Texas A&M uh, real estate um, uh, area. Lone Star Boxer Rescue is a nonprofit organization serving Montgomery County and surrounding areas dedicated to the health and well-being of the boxer breed. Lone Star Boxer Rescue is run and managed 100% by volunteers since 1999. Our main objective is to rescue, rehabilitate, and rehome boxers that come to us from any sources, including local animal shelters, owner surrenders, and strays. For more information about Lone Star Boxer Rescue, visit our website at lsbr.org. Welcome back to the Legal Connection Show, and um, we're talking about water damage and water rights and whose responsibility it is, whether it's the county or the private owners, to um, to rectify some of the problems that we're having with uh, uh, drainage issues in um, Montgomery County, which is a, a pretty common problem we have out here because basically a lot of our subdivisions were built on swamps. We have a lot of bios out here, um, as we talked about earlier in the show. Uh, we know that some of our subdivisions were basically uh, uh, designated to be lakes, just like we had Lake Conroe as a low area. But I think I don't, that we actually had Lake Conroe was a whole different show in itself that talks about why Lake Conroe was built in the 70s and it's a, a reservoir for water and what have you. But but I know that um, it was uh, designated on a bunch of plats that I looked at when I went to go look in the, you know, some of our county archives that uh, Magnolia Lake was designated right off of 2978 at the low area. And even where the Target Center is, it was a an area where Bear Branch and some of our creeks actually drained, and it was built up and built upon. So we do have, um, you know, when you build on land that was at one time a waterway, then you've got 
a, a higher volume of water that's flowing through a narrow path. And, you know, you've got to look at your 100 year planes, uh, floodplains, and what have you. So, what we're going to talk about is a little bit about Texas law and and, and water, uh, uh, the Texas water law. And I'm reading from the Texas A&M University website, and um, they are a wealth of information. Um, I love to go to their site. I'm getting ready, like I said, I'm getting ready to get my master's from Texas A&M in land development and what developers look at when they're starting to put subdivisions in here in Montgomery County, which is one of the fastest growing um, cities in uh, Conroe and then Montgomery County in the country. So um, I'll have even more information for y'all as I get educated on this through my professors at Texas A&M starting next week. All right, so here's some information so you don't have to look it up about Texas water law. In Texas, water rights depend on whether the water is groundwater or surface water. Generally, Texas groundwater belongs to the landowner. Groundwater is governed by the rule of capture, which grants landowners the right to capture the water beneath their property. The landowners do not own the water, but have a right only to pump and capture whatever water is available, regardless of the effects of the, of the pumping on the neighboring wells. Surface water, on the other hand, belongs to the state of Texas. It can be used by the landowner, uh, landowner only with the state's permission, okay? And you wonder, why is that anything to do with the drainage? Because, because it does, and we're going to get to that in just a little bit. And um, uh, before I get into groundwater and surface water and using those rights and, and, and uh, drainage and that kind of thing, um, I'm going to flip over to, um, to drainage water because that's kind of what our show is about today. Diffused surface water in its natural state occurs after rainfall, snow melt, and flows across the land with high elevations, uh, from high elevations to lower elevations. This diffused water is often called storm water, drain water, or surface runoff. Once the water flows into clearly defined water course, it is claimed by the state and is subject to appropriation. On its way to the water course, drainage water often flows across privately owned lands. In such cases, the water does not automatically become the property of the landowners, although they may capture and use it. Legal problems arise when a landowner interferes with the natural flow of drainage water by capturing and holding the flow or by diverting or decreasing, increasing it. There are three general rules of law that apply when diffused surface water is captured or diverted. And the first one I was going to talk about on the show, but I only have like five minutes, so I'm just going to, going to hit on it, is the common enemy rule. One is called the common enemy rule, one of the three issues, three general rules. Under this rule, drainage water is regarded as an enemy common to all landowners. The law allows every owner to take any measure to protect property regardless of the consequences to other neighbors, okay? And I have a whole write-up that I'm going to post on the common enemy rule. And, um, but basically, it works like this. Um, the term common enemy originates from the idea that surface water is a common enemy of every property owner. The common enemy doctrine embraces the idea that because water is a common enemy, Surface water may be diverted at the landowner's discretion, through the diver though the diversion may actually hurt an adjacent owner. And that goes back to a Supreme Court case in te Texas, Miller versus Letzerick in 1932. Um, and it goes on to say that, um, that well, actually, there's a law. It's in the Water Code. It's Texas Water Code um, 11.086. It says, no person may divert. They actually had to make a law to counter this, and this is in Westlaw in 2017, to, to offset this common enemy, enemy rule. It says, no person may divert or impound natural, natural flow of water. I'm, I'm, I'm not a news broadcaster. No person may divert or impound the natural flow of surface waters in the state or permit a diversion or impounding by him to continue in a manner that damages the property of another by the overflow of water diverted or impounded. And that was section A of the Texas Water Code 11, section 110886. Um, but section B says a person whose property is injured 
by an overflow of water caused by an unlawful diversion or impounding has remedies at law and in equity and may recover damages occasioned by that overflow. So basically that's saying it's contrary to the Texas Supreme Court says, case that says you can protect your own property. A law had to be created that says that if you've got a water flow that's going through your property and you divert it, that if it hurts your neighbor, you're responsible for it. Surface water is water such as rainfall runoff that collects and flows on the ground but does not form a water course. So um, our show is, you know, I've used up the time allotted for today's show. We're going to go over this in a little bit more detail on the next show. I'm also going to post the common enemy rule the natu- and the other two issues, that was the natural flow of civil rule and the reasonable flow of sub- of water and ground flow in the next co- uh, on my website. We'll talk about it in the next show. So um, thank you for listening. We're going to talk more about this on our next show. Um, this is Tony Collins signing off for today in the Legal Connection show. If you missed part of it, please go to our website, um, our IRLongstar.com to listen to our webcast, and we'll talk to you later. Remember to serve God by serving others, and we'll talk to you next week.